What's up, everybody? We are here for another crazy day in the Darrell Brooks trial. It finally happened. You've all been asking for it. He got removed from the courtroom in his own trial, which is very hard to do because they do literally everything they can to protect your rights when you are a pro se defendant, trying a case on your own without a lawyer, trying to create appellate issues. A lot of questions were answered today and a lot of your questions were answered by this judge. We saw how the procedure worked. A ton of you have made it. A ton of you have asked the question, why has she not held him in contempt? Why has she not thrown him in jail? Which he already goes to jail every day. Um, a ton of you have asked, why has she not done more? What's going on with this judge? Well, she answered a lot of those questions today. We're going to watch. We are going to watch some clips together where we can learn about how all this works. We're going to watch some clips together to see Darrell Brooks and how he responds to certain questions. We're going to watch this judge in this state attorney's office continue to try to protect his rights throughout this process. And we're going to discuss them together. And of course, as always, like we do on the show, we are going to answer a ton of questions. If you've already subscribed to the channel, then hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, the reminder bell, and then the like button before we play our first clip of this trial. If you're new to the show, we break down these cases, we discuss them, we answer questions so that you can understand the legal process and what this craziness is that's going on in the Darrell Brooks trial. When a pro se defendant represents himself, it's hard to follow. We see all of the different arguments he's making and we're seeing them fall apart one by one. We're also seeing, and we're going to see by the verdict in this case, how a jury responds to a defendant not getting along with a judge. And it started basically right from the jump today. We're going to start very early on when they first come out, because when the jury is not there, a lot of times that is when we can see and learn a lot about the process and a lot about what happens. Yes, already 2,200 people in the chat. So hit that like button. Go ahead. It's free. Click that like button real quick. And we are about to start looking at this case. We'll take some breaks to answer questions as we always do. So this first clip is actually a pretty long chunk. I have it on two times speed, so let me slow it down to one and a half for us. It's a pretty long chunk, but a lot happens, and we see the first blow up of the day, and it kind of lets us know how today is going to go. Um, and let's hear it. I did want to address something briefly. Go ahead. Um, as the court knows from our short discussions yesterday, the state will be playing a couple videos of the defendants in his statements. Um, the court had previously heard those as part of a motion hearing, and I'm not sure if I'm really getting the defendant notice or what I'm doing, but I, I really tried hard and I, I'm pulling out snippets from this because if the court recalls, there are a lot of references that the defendant makes to prior domestics with Erica, um, his prior record, things that the court had previously excluded. So I'm going through and I am um, pulling specific time um, ranges from this so that nothing that was previously ruled um, inadmissible comes in. And I guess obviously this defendant has the absolute right to cross-examine the witness. He has the right and we offered and we have been um, putting exhibits up for him, but I do want it to be noted that I would not be willing to have Mr. Brooks just say, oh, go to about the seven minute mark. Um, because if he even goes like two seconds before a clip that I had played or two seconds after, it could include information that was previously ruled inadmissible. And I guess what I would say to the defendant is the court has previously protected the defendant um, to make sure that things didn't come out where he asked a question that could be construed as opening the door and the court said, we're not gonna go there, Mr. Brooks. And he got the message. So what she's saying is, we have protected Darrell Brooks throughout this trial. The state has and the judge has. And we know because we're lawyers and we've tried a lot of cases, we know what he's about to ask. We know what this witness is about to say. We step in, we pause, we tell him, are you sure you want to ask that question? Because you might be opening the door and he has picked up what we're putting down. The problem is he's also just been using our office as if they work for him, saying, put this exhibit up, start here, stop there. And while that's fine and we're happy to do it, I have clipped this very specifically because, again, I am a lawyer who tries these kinds of cases. 
and I know exactly where I cut it. So if he just says, play it here, stop it there, and he opens the door, I'm not just going to let it slide at this point. If the jury hears part of it, I am going to need to point out the importance of it, to ask questions on it, and walk through the door if he is going to open it. If not, he needs to be very careful. He chose to represent himself. He's choosing to play parts of the video if he chooses to do so. So I am putting him on notice. Because if these other bad acts come out, we're going to talk about them. However, with this... If there's any portion of this video that's played that talks about the prior with Erica, I do consider that that he has opened the door and I will be asking the witness about it. So I guess this is maybe more so directed at Mr. Brooks, that if he plays clips that um, contain that information, he will have opened the door. He's had this video for weeks at least. Um, this, these videos have been subject to a motion hearing. I'm not sure exactly what access he had to them before. I've reviewed the five hour video a number of times. I've been very meticulous in my timestamps that I'm grabbing out from here. And I am unwilling to have the defendant put Miss Gussie in a spot where he's kind of well, around this point. He needs to get exact times that he wants um, started and stopped because what happens is he says, okay, can you pause here? By the time he says that, five seconds may have gone by, which may be enough to, some of these, if I would play two more seconds than what I have here, it would open the door. So I just want the defendant to realize that this is kind of a slippery slope here and, um, he proceeds at his own risk. And I'm not going to ask Miss Gussie to stop at a certain time because I think something's about to be said. Um, that's on the defendants. Um, and if he opens the door, I can um, assure you, I will I will go into it. Um, so I did want to put that on the record. Judge, not to be a jerk about it, but just once it's out there, I can't not address it. And if it's a defendant who brings it out there um, into the view of the jury, then I'm going to feel compelled to address it. Um, and then I didn't know if the court wanted to go through the preliminary instruction that you had provided previously on the interpreter. My from coming in, but a defendant can open the door in a variety of ways. These recordings, and I have reviewed them previously, uh, do contain uh, discussion and statements by you regarding these other acts. And as you heard from Attorney Basie, she has all of the timestamps to stop at appropriate times so that the state does not run afoul of those pretrial rulings. You can open the door by asking questions, by asking for a video to be played, um, and not knowing those exact timestamps. I think it's important that I reinforce what the state has just advised you of uh, so that when you are watching the recording as all of us will be, um, if there is something you want replayed and you wanna cross examine the witness about that you know those time stamps, and then the state has graciously indicated they would assist once again in replaying portions of that video. I don't need a response from you unless you feel you would like to give a response yeah, to any of that. Um, with all due respect, they're the ones that wanna play the video. So I don't, I don't understand how I'm the one opening the door they chose to play video, so. They're not gonna play the entire video, though. They're going to redact out, probably stop, fast forward, the portions that this court said would, would be inadmissible. So if you, so for example, if during your cross-examination of Detective Carpenter, you ask the state to replay a portion of the video and you say, go back to around the seven minute mark, you have to understand that you may open the door, even inadvertently, to some of those other X evidence coming in. So what I'm telling you is, if you want any portions replayed, then, or if you ask for the entire video to be played under the rule of completeness, that you have an understanding that you would be opening the door to the evidence of other acts coming in. Potentially, I'll have to rule on it at that time. Um, but, so be mindful of the timestamps. I, I don't understand it, Your Honor. That, that'll be, that's almost like you making a ruling and then it, it not having any standing. If you so already made a ruling. The ruling's against them. I told the state. You making a ruling and then it doesn't have any standing? It's like, buddy, you're just saying words. That doesn't. That doesn't actually make sense. Like what, what you're saying is not actually a thing. They can't offer this evidence. Right, They're that's the what I'm one. So if you offer the evidence or ask questions that would open the door, that's a different story. And we all have treaded lightly when you've asked questions that would have opened the door to a variety of witnesses. So the state's just simply saying, look, <coughs> we're going to do our job. We're not going to put in the other acts evidence. We're going to pause the video, fast forward the appropriate spots. But if you want any portions replayed, or if you ask for the entire video to be played, uh, then you do that at your peril of having those other acts evidence come in. So that's all I wanna tell you. Um, as far as the jury instruction, uh, do you have any position on whether that second, well, I should say second, it's the very last paragraph where it says, add the following if appropriate. Do you have any position on whether the court uh, reads this entire jury instruction 60 to the jury prior to Mr. Marquez being called as a witness? Yeah, I think the jury should hear whatever need, needs, that they need to hear. Do you have a position on that last paragraph specifically, sir, given the information that the state has provided today? It's in brackets and it's after a bolded section that says add the following if appropriate. Advise the parties yesterday we would be talking about that this morning. 
this is just talking about how evidence comes off with an interpreter that you listen to the words the interpreter says. You don't try to translate the Spanish yourself. You don't try to translate because a lot of the jurors may speak Spanish. I mean, it was just stated languages. that um, the witness doesn't speak very good English. And so that would that would indicate that it would be a lot more work for the interpreter to make That's sure. That's not what I'm asking you about, sir. I'm asking whether you whether you have a position on whether I include the very last paragraph of that instruction uh, to the jury. No, I don't feel like that needs to be read to the jury. Um, I think it's pretty it's pretty clear from the from all the language leading up to that. This is just arguing Let me to ask argue. Attorney Fazy a question about uh, the contact the office of the district attorney has had. So then they talk about this witness a little bit, but I want to jump ahead to some of the early fireworks here. I think it's the 39 minute mark. to me if it has to do with the record it needs to go to the clerk of court and it was, because it was I sent to the clerk of court the, but I still, uh, should be, I still should be able to be told if it was received and get a copy which you've done that before every single ICF and I told you so I would no longer change? be doing that sir because of this very issue it so you say so now time. it changes so now it changes all of a sudden no it didn't change all of a sudden sir and you know that so don't no, try to no. confuse does it record. change all of a sudden because well, I've been getting copies of everything I've sent, which is what you asked me this to do. This changed last week, and you it know should, that. It shouldn't change. So no, I don't that, know. I'm bringing the jury out, and I'm not addressing this issue. So, so I want, I want a copy of my ICS forward. that I send. Um, send a request to the I don't have to send another request. Where's the one that I just sent last week? Right, the jury is going to come out, so please be respectful. I, I will, but at the same time, you still have to. I did what you asked me to do. If you tell me to do something and I do it, and then now you're saying I, I'm not going to get a copy of what you've been providing them ever since, I, ever since you told me to do it. Mr. Brooks, the rules on that changed last week. No, no, it did not. I'm still supposed to be able to say if it's been received or not. So why should I have to say multiple ICFs to even know if they, they've been received? That's ridiculous. Right? I'm going to give the parties the uh, final version of jury instruction 60, which I will be reading at the That's, appropriate time. Come on, you can't change stuff at the last minute. You no, asked me to do I something. did it as a courtesy, you Frank. No, you're not courteous I'm not, to me. I'm not, so even, I'm, not even out, I'm not even referring to that. that the jury I'm referring, is to, the fact, I'm referring to the fact that you right. haven't even... This is like mind-boggling stuff when you understand what a trial is supposed to be like like Rob, who understands what a trial is supposed to be like. And he's in here. Thanks, Rob, for joining us in the chat here. When a jury comes out, regardless of your feelings towards the judge, towards opposing counsel, towards the case, towards witnesses, towards evidence, whatever's happening, you respect the jury. You try not to look like a fool in front of the jury. You try not to look disrespectful to the judge in front of the jury. You try to make the jury think the judge likes you. He's literally doing all of the opposite of what you're supposed to do. And to me, every time he does this, the jury walks in, rolls their eyes and says, oh, great, he's going off again. It gets so bad that the judge literally has to correct him in front of the jury. So let's listen to that here. I had enough respect to tell me he's been received. To the jury. They're coming up. Okay, that doesn't, that doesn't uh, mean that you shouldn't be able to tell me if my ICF has been received. ICF that you told me to submit. You told me that. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will disregard the commentary by Mr. Uh, Brooks. I for value and return for value this document, just like you've been hiding everything from the jury. Start, that they the need jury to will do. disregard. Just start screaming nonsense now. That's that's his mo. Just start screaming nonsense. The court is not hiding anything from the jury. Yeah, yeah, you are. So, yeah, you Mr. Are. Brooks, please be respectful of the jury. They're you coming should, out. You should be respectful. We are you, you are addressing issues that are not related to evidence. They in are. This case. You asked me to do Mr. something. Brooks, I'll do it. Please. And all then right. now it changes. Everyone can be seated. Thank you. This is ridiculous. Just like subject matter jurisdiction hasn't been proved. Just, just throw like that in there. determinations that you don't have to prove anything by law. Do you notice it's like the same phrases that he just keeps on saying over and over again. He thinks he's scoring points with the jury. He thinks he's planting reasonable doubt. But instead, the jury is just seeing. And this is why it's so important for the state to play those clips they played today of his interrogation. So they can see. He tried to do similar things with the uh, law enforcement. He tried to convince them, tell little lies that, you know, would make it seem a certain way. When he didn't think that they were up to speed, he tried to really get away with it. When he thought they walked out of the room, he acted a certain way. He is trying to manipulate the law enforcement officers in the video, and he is clearly trying to manipulate the system and the jury at this point. And I think it could not be more clear and the judge has done a great job of explaining to the jury during his outburst and trying to keep him in line to finish this case. Which is a tacit agreement by you, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the, please disregard the statements currently Why, made true? by Mr. Brooks. Why, because it's true? Incorrect statements of the law. They and prove that they're evidence. incorrect. Proof. In this case. Where's the proof? Where's the legal proof? And you 
need to disregard that. Because you don't have it. I'm here don't to with testimony, Mr. Brooks. I warn I you, do I not interrupt. I don't know by the discussion name. about whether you will continue to be here. I don't All consent right. to being called the name for the record. Detective Carpenter, please stand as is my practice when a witness is. So thank you, Cindy. I'm sorry you're sick, but glad you're enjoying the stream here. Uh, so that was the first bit of fireworks for today. And it didn't really stop. The fireworks continued. And we have more to watch together and to discuss. But the cop takes the stand again to explain the interrogation for us to watch clips. And we talked a lot in every case that we break down when we can hear the defendant or the plaintiffs, the party's own words or a witness's own words used against them or stating what is actually true for our own ears and eyes, that goes a long way. And we saw a lot of that today for Mr. Brooks. But there were also some issues with the way the state presented evidence, in my opinion. So what was great is right in the beginning, Daryl Brooks spells and confirms his first and last name to this officer, gives his life story about his baby girl born in Detroit, his work history. He's joking. He's talking about the Packers. He's talking about his high school, Riverside High. You can tell I'm not drunk. You can tell I'm not under the influence. To me, proving the state's case that he's not insane if he were going to try to say he was insane or confused or something happened. He's explaining to the cop, no, no, I'm good. I'm totally good. Everything's fine. He thinks he's getting the cop on his side. The cop is trying to basically play Daryl Brooks, let's be honest. Um, he talked about making bad decisions with women. The cop kind of agrees. There's more on that later. Um, they asked what the vibe was. To me, I'm not sure that's an appropriate or admissible question. I'd probably object to that. What's the vibe? Can we get a definition of vibe? Because I think vibe is like, what's the feeling or what, what do you think Brooks is trying to do? And that's speculation. I'm not really sure how the vibe gets into it. But he does make a good point that they Brooks keeps asking about the domestic incident. He asks if there's something more. And the cop says, that's an indication that he knows there's more. And you can learn a lot from somebody just talking when you let them talk. And then we took a pause here. And a lot of you had that. Why are we breaking? Why do they stop the cop in the middle of his testimony? Well, most parties always agree that unavailability of witnesses or interpreters or scheduling conflicts, you'll pause certain witnesses, do the ones you have to and you need to. That's all that happened here. It's also not unusual that you take a, a defendant witness, play it in the plaintiff case in chief. If it's a civil case or the prosecution's case in chief in a criminal case. That's what happened here. That's why they paused it to call Marquez even though it's a defense witness, the jury knows it's a defense witness. Daryl Brooks asks direct examination questions, non-leading questions. The state gets to ask leading questions, which was a point of contention, which we will get to. But before we get there, let's take our first break and answer some questions here. Uh, Tessie Turner, Peter, what happens if DB does not give the DA his witness list and or he doesn't arrange for their appearance in court? Then they don't show up and he has no witnesses to call. It's not the state's fault if he doesn't tell them that. Katie, Hi, I love your lives. I think he's going to absolutely lose his mind during sentencing. What do you think his reaction will be? I think his reaction is going to be, I don't even submit to this sentencing. I don't know who Daryl Brooks is. You don't have authority to sentence me. I don't consent to being called with his name. You still never prove subject matter jurisdiction. That's what I think sentencing is going to sound like. I think he's just going to do the same thing. I think he's going to end up for sentencing in another courtroom and he's going to listen to it on video and the judge is probably going to love it. Garrett Stube is a new member, and I saw a slew of new members come in here, which is awesome, because after this Daryl Brooks trial, we are doing a special members-only chat. Mary B will be there, or Marie B will be there. Um, it's a members-only chat, a subscribers-only view and watch video, and it's going to be a ranking of a top 10. So I've been asking people for what they think the top 10 should be that we rank and go through. It can be legal-related. It can be not legal-related. Lonnie Wolf is also a new member. And I will continue to play the new members while the video is up. Doug D. Hey, Peter, will you have time to take an accident call tomorrow? Always, Doug D. Always. Um, shoot me an email, lawyer, you know, at gmail.com or look up our phone number. Tragoslaw.com is our, our website. You can look up our phone number. Please call. Happy to help you if I can always with accident cases, um, injury cases of any kind. Give me a call always. New sub from WFLA. Today was insane. The judge is a saint. I agree. Ashley King, do you think DB will call Susan to the stand? I think Susan's the DA there. Um, he's going to try to call somebody from the plaintiff in the state of Wisconsin for sure. He's already kind of tried, but I think he's going to try again. 
Uh, Radio Chaos. Have you ever seen a lawyer accuse a judge of judicial misconduct in open court? Yes. It actually has happened. There are some crazy lawyers out there. There are some lawyers that are mavericks, we'll call them. Uh, and they do some wild, wild things. Mo, hold on. He's got to check his public defender notes. Yes, yes, he does. John, I loved how ju the judge IDs Brooks by his name, then Brooks states his nonsense, but then the judge responds, Brooks, you've said your name now twice on the record per today's evidence. Finally, we've officially got him calling himself Brooks. I have that clip and we will watch that together, John. It is pretty funny how the judge says that after he... He said it's his name. He's given us his ID. He spelled it. He's confirmed it over and over again. I'm not really sure what else we need. A. O'Connor, while this has been agony and frustrating to watch, he must, we must uphold democracy and the Constitution. If you don't stand up for those, what do you stand for? He is guilty and it must be proven, period. I agree with you. I agree with you. This is part of it. The good, the bad, the ugly. There's no perfect system. And when you give people rights, right? We, we talk about the bad ones ruining it for the rest of us. When you give people rights that, that they should have as human beings, there are always going to be some bad apples that make us think maybe we shouldn't have given people those rights, but that's wrong. And A. O'Connor's statement is correct. Even when some people that make you regret giving human beings rights that they deserve, it's still the right thing to provide those constitutional rights in our democracy. And it's of the utmost importance. So thank you, A. O'Connor, for this comment and for the super chat. I appreciate it. Okay. Tina Crichton. Have I heard DB say that's not his name? What does this mean? It appears the court dismisses it when he says this. He's a sovereign citizen. He doesn't consent to being called that name because it's in all caps, but then he doesn't say it later. Um, he won't tell her what name we're going to hear. She actually asks him, what name do you want to be called? And he refuses to answer. So this question is going to be answered in a future clip that we get to. But before we get to that clip, let's get to the major explosion of the day where Brooks gets tossed. Uh, looks like it's at the two hour and seven ish minute mark. So let's jump there and watch the chaos together. And this poor Mr. Marquez guy, Brooks calls him as a witness after hitting him with a car, breaking his leg, causing him to have two surgeries. Imagine being called as a witness when that's how you're involved in this case. Cause that's what this poor guy has to show up to do. And he seems like a very nice guy, but the brutality ensues now. Overruled, you may answer. No, no. How far from the position that you recalled yourself to be at when you were walking, did you land? Objection leading Overruled, you may answer. Yeah, they can leave. Between 15 and 20 feet. So your body flew through the air between 15 and 20 feet. Is that what your testimony leading. is? Okay. Yes. Sorry, I didn't rule on the objection, but it is overruled in his answer. May stand. Was David also struck by a vehicle during the parade? Yes. Did he, he received injuries as well? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled, you may answer. Okay. Yes. Can you describe what your injuries were, sir? Objection leading. Overruled. You may answer. Okay. Yes. What were they? Objection leading. Overruled. La My fibula. Y ligamentos. And ligaments. Your fibula was broken. Objection leading. Speculative. Overruled. As to both. The witness may answer. Okay. Yes. And you had torn ligaments. Objection leading. Overruled. You say that any question before? Same. Yes. And were those both in the same leg? And you see Brooks start muttering things under his breath, being more disrespectful. It's building, it's building, it's building. He hears these leading questions and he doesn't understand why they're getting overruled because he uh, didn't go to law school. So that can be difficult. But the judges explained they are crossing the witness now, dude. They can lead. Leading. Okay. Sorry, yes. over overruled. <laughs> If we yeah, of course. just wait when there's a yeah, of objection, um, I'm overruling it. It's relevant. It's not leading. The witness's answers may stand. I mean, yeah, you overrule every objection. And the jury will disregard the additional commentary made by Mr. Brooks at this time. Judicial misconduct at its finest. Judicial misconduct at its finest, he says. Judicial misconduct at its finest. There's a lot of things you can mutter. And I, I got to be honest. I mean, at this point, 
I don't see how I wouldn't go off on him. He'd be in another courtroom and he'd probably be there the entire time. I, this is also why I probably wouldn't be a very good judge. He has frustrated me to the point where I would be like, okay, dude, yeah, you're going to sit through this trial, but you're not going to get to just put on this mockery in this show and make a mockery of our judicial system. I've had enough calling for judicial misconduct, telling the jury we're hiding stuff from them. No, I've had enough, but she shows more restraint and it's not over yet. And which leg was that, sir? Objection. Action. Answer. Hold on. Hold on. My left leg. Did you have to have surgery on that leg? Objection. Leading. Overruled. Yes. Just one. I see what y'all trying to do. That's what he says. It's like, do you think that that has an effect, dude? A positive effect, I should say? Dos. Two. That's not going to work. Mr. Brooks, you are advised to stop with the commentary. No, I'm going to say what I want. You called this witness. I'm going to take a break right now. No, I'm going to say what I want to. That's what he says. It's like he pushes the line because he doesn't know where the line is, right? So he pushes as far as he can. But when you strike a nerve and you hit it and you cross that line, judges usually explode much sooner than this judge has. And when you say stuff like, I'm going to do what I want to, no, sir, you're not because you're not actually a sovereign being. You will not do what you want to. You will do what I want you to do and impose that power on him. My blood starts to boil a bit when I see the disrespect and utter disregard for the authority of a judge. And there are some judges I don't like. There are some judges that I respect their position, but maybe they're not maybe the best lawyer or most respectable person. There's no reason for this and no room for this in the court system at all, regardless of what you feel about another person, judge, lawyer, witness, whatever. Respect is something that everyone can give. It's free, right? So when you choose not to, after everyone is bending over back or backwards to show you respect that you don't deserve and to help you with exhibits and be your secretary and your scheduler and make sure they get witnesses, because they don't have to do that. They can say, we're sending them out this day. Give us what you want. If you don't give it to us, we're not doing it. They're being more than accommodating to Mr. Brooks. And he continues to be purely disrespectful to everyone in this courtroom. That's the type of stuff that really makes my blood boil when people show disrespect like that after they're being shown more respect than they deserve, frankly. Right now, I'm excuse the jury and this witness. All right. What, you, what you're doing is judicial misconduct. It's judicial misconduct. But you don't want the jury to hear the truth. That's not fair to the jury. They have a right to hear everything. Actually, they don't. You'd know that if you went to law school. Nothing to see here that you fix, fix the trial because you don't want to tell the truth to the jury. Mr. Brooks. I'm not about to sit here and let you fix the trial because you don't want to tell the truth to the jury. This is stuff that's all on the record and still in front of the jury as they're trying to get them out of the courtroom, but they're still not out yet. You can hear them walking past the chairs and through the door. She has got to be so annoyed at this point, right? Brooks, please stop. No, ain't no please you are nothing. being disruptive. Ain't no, ain't no please, please nothing. Find some reason to say. Ain't no please nothing, he said. It's like, you're right. I don't have to say please when I tell you to do something. Somebody's being disruptive because they want the truth to be out there. Man, quit it. You're supposed to be Mr. Brooks, judge. I'm advising you that continued interruptions will result in you forfeiting your rights. Okay, and in this under what under what law in fact can you do that? Illinois versus Allen. Okay, sir. with the fourth the fourth uh, option that you made up that's not even in the uh, law. <laughs> because Brooks, you can't do that. I need to make a law. Complaint. You can't do that. You know the option that you just made up. It's like, gosh, dude, you're so frustrating. He's so frustrating. I can understand. So many people commented on my Twitter. They can't watch. They literally can't watch, and I understand because it is brutally frustrating to watch this guy and see him like you know, get away with it. At the end of the day, I don't think he's going to get away with it. But at this point, it feels like he's getting away with his behavior. Okay. Right. All right. I'm going to um, excuse everyone. Mr. Brooks is being removed from the courtroom. He will continue in the neighboring courtroom. Uh, please make sure he has his objection signed and a pad of paper. So is that, so that he can so is that holding me in contempt? participate and I will make a ruling when I... Uh, so are you holding me in contempt? Out. You hear how it almost sounds like he's baiting her, like he wants to be held in contempt? Because we're going to get to that answer that a lot of you have asked. Why hasn't she held him in contempt? She's going to give us that answer. Is that civil or criminal? All right, and then we're going to bring it back at 229 here-ish. Last witness, Mr. Brooks objected almost without fail, if not without fail, to every single question asked by the state on grounds of either leading or relevance. And then when the court overruled the objections, as time went on, it seemed to me that his commentary became much more audible. He was muttering under his breath and clearly showing disrespect for the court and the proceedings. Um, in my opinion, they're baseless objections. Uh, again, because this witness was- They are. 
into court on a subpoena that was from Mr. Brooks, served, of course, by the state. I think just one speaks for all of us. State to assist with him in that regard. Uh, but the state was well within its rights, rights to ask leading questions. Um, it's this court's opinion that the repeated interruptions by way of baseless objections is to disrupt these proceedings, uh, disrupt the testimony of the witnesses, and in particular, Mr. Marquez. Um, this court has been abundantly patient this morning, noting the repeated interruptions by Mr. Brooks, uh, starting right away at 831. There were a couple of interruptions continuing at 837. At 848, I think we had a total of five more at that point or so. Uh, at 849, and then of course at 1019, this court removed him under its authority in Illinois versus Allen. Um, I also had warned him, or at least at times, I would give the jury an admonishment, not really an admonishment, but an instruction, please disregard the commentary by Mr. Brooks. It's been very apparent that any time this jury is brought in or taken out, Mr. Brooks begins making statements that are misstatements of the law or generally his disagreement with whatever is going on at that particular time, accusing the court of either bias or misconduct, um, accusing this court of hiding information from this jury. Um, this court is not doing any such thing. Um, I will make a finding that based upon the conduct of Mr. Brooks, that he has forfeited his right to be present during the cross-examination, the bailiffs who are in that courtroom. Um, but we have the ability, I have the ability through that technology. Shoot, I skipped the part we want, I want to talk about trying to make it speed up, but that's what happens. On the conduct of Mr. Brooks, that he has forfeited his right to be present during the cross-examination uh, and any redirect of Mr. Marquez. Um, Mr. Brooks's conduct has been anything but respectful today. It, again, it's been disruptive. Um, as this court was stepping off the bench, he made some type of statement about contempt. Are you finding me in contempt? This court is well aware that one of the permissible ways to handle um, a defendant who shows flagrant disregard in the courtroom for elementary standards of proper conduct um, is to find uh, a defendant in contempt. However, I'm not dealing with a defendant who is out of custody. I'm dealing with a defendant who is in custody on very serious charges, including if convicted facing uh, the possibility of life sentences without the possibility of extended supervision. It is my opinion that finding him in contempt uh, is not really a viable alternative to this court. Frankly, it would, in my opinion, um, it would serve to uh, give the defendant um, let me restate that. Um, in my opinion, if this court were to find Mr. Brooks in contempt, it would allow him to profit from his own wrongdoing because it would result in a delay of these proceedings. Boom. That is the answer. That's why she's not finding him in contempt. That's why he keeps baiting her. That's why he wants to. He'll mention it again later. Why did you find me in contempt? That is the answer. That's why she's not doing it. She does not want to let him win this little battle and get another delay, have another trial, waste everybody's time and money. She's explaining it to us why she is not as annoying as this has seemed, why she's not holding him in contempt. I would have to, of course, uh, make certain findings. One of the possibilities for contempt is to hold him in custody until such time as he's willing to abide by the rules. That is just not something this court is willing to even do because it would delay the proceedings. Um, I, I am aware that that is a option uh, identified by the Supreme Court in Illinois versus Allen, but I would remind the parties once again that Illinois versus Allen was decided in 1970. Um, certainly the technology that we have available in this courtroom was not something available to the parties in Illinois versus Allen. We have a very new state-of-the-art courthouse uh, that I am operating out of. I'm in, uh, I have nothing further. So. I'm in, I'll have the witness brought back to the witness stand with the assistance of the interpreter and the state can continue with its cross-exam of the witness called out of order but on behalf of Mr. Brooks. And I am getting verification from the bailiff in the other courtroom through my bailiff here that the audio and video is working as it should. With the uh, direct examination by the state of Detective Carpenter, um, I would like you to come back to this courtroom. Um, so this is after there were no real more questions for Marquez. Now she's like, will you come back? Will you come back to the courtroom? What do you think? Is Brooks going to say, yes, I'll come back, Your Honor, I apologize? Are you willing to uh, conduct yourself consistently with the decorum and respect inherent in the concepts of courts and judicial proceedings? I didn't do anything to be found held in contempt in the first place. So are you willing to abide by the rules of decorum and civility? Um, he brings up the words contempt, like the last person asked the comment I just said on the screen. He keeps bringing up the word contempt, not the judge. I would direct your attention to um, SCR chapter 62, which has been provided to you previously. Um, does that say anything in there about me being held in contempt? Um, that does not, no. 
So why have, I, why have I been held in contempt? I didn't hold you in contempt, sir. You are simply in a different courtroom based upon your disruptive behavior. I'm giving I've you the opportunity. I've been dis disruptive. I've put my findings on the record, sir, and I, the record stands in that regard. Um, yeah, I'm giving you the correct. opportunity, um, if you can, uh, indicate to this court that you will conduct yourself um, with courtesy and decorum. Are you so, willing to do that, sir? Is, is your honor willing to tell me why I've been held in contempt? I did not hold you in contempt, sir. I've already indicated that. Removing me from the courtroom is, is like holding me in contempt. Um, no, it's I not. didn't hold you in contempt. You were removed pursuant to the authority given to me by the United States Supreme Court in Illinois versus Allen um, based on your disruptive behavior. My behavior wasn't disruptive, Your Honor. The record should be corrected in that. And as I recall you stating before, or not you stating, but us having a, a, a conversation about Illinois versus Allen for the record at one point, I could, I got the date in my notes that we had it where I, I said on the record that there were three three uh, options identified. And Mr. Brooks, I'm not going to have a debate with you on what the law on, means dude. and whether yeah. you understand it or not. I'm simply asking you whether you are willing at this time to abide by the standards of courtesy and decorum that are outlined in SCR Chapter 62 and that are inherent uh, in the concept of courts and judicial proceedings, including um, making proper objections based upon the rules of evidence, based upon the rules of procedure, based upon the law, that you will not interrupt when you disagree with a ruling made by the court, uh, and that you will generally conduct yourself with dignity and decorum. But is, it not my right? is it not my right to object? I'm going to ask Mr. Brooks one more time if he would like to come back to this courtroom and if he's willing to conduct himself um, with dignity, respect, and decorum. But for the record, I don't consent to being called that name, and I never stated that I wanted to be removed from the courtroom. All right, I'm going to mute uh, Mr. Brooks. He is clearly not answering my question, um, and given his recent conduct, I'll indicate he continues to forfeit. So eventually the state says, well, let Mr. Brooks know that uh, if he just gets the bailiff, they will let him know, come back in the courtroom, and eventually he does come back in the courtroom before they continue with the cop who did the police interviews um, with Daryl Brooks. Let's get to some questions here. Uh, Courtney Arleo, how do courts handle an unruly pro se defendant during a jury field trip? This is something I have not seen. Most of this stuff I have seen or dealt with before. This is something I haven't seen. Hopefully we get to watch at some point. Katie, what witnesses could he, could he possibly bring in? Apparently witnesses that he hit with a, his car and broke their leg. That's the only witness we know of so far that he's brought in. Lindsay Liu, I think we'll soon see a complete loss of impulse control. This behavior is the result of the same defect that allowed him to plow through a parade. Shanta, when are closing arguments? Well, the state has said they are planning to close their case in chief by tomorrow at the end of the day. We're also going to get a view of the car, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and Daryl Brooks, I think his witnesses are coming Thursday and Friday, so maybe Monday. We'll see. Uh, Laura Correa, starting to fear the judge does something out of exhaustion that gives him grounds for appeal. I don't think she's gotten anywhere near that yet, if you want my honest opinion. Beth Vanderholst, can witnesses get called back? Potentially, yes. Oi, starting uh, start my nerves for Bryce all over again. It's very unlikely. This state has methodically gone through it, and Brooks probably doesn't know he can call him back. And the state's not going to call, have to call Bryce, I don't think, for rebuttal. I don't remember if they released him. Jennifer Profant. Newbie, what's up, Jennifer? Thanks for the comment and a new member. That's awesome. Obsessed with this trial and love your breakdown of the law and how it pertains. One question would be, would they ever stop the trial for incompetence or a mental competency check? What would that take? Yes, they absolutely would if there was a legitimate fear that that is happening. With all of this video evidence, I think it'd be very hard for him to try to even fake or act incompetent at this point. But if the bailiffs that take him back and forth from the jail, if somebody in the jail, if the judge, if the state attorney, if somebody looking at him and felt like he wasn't competent anymore, had some kind of mental break or snap, they would absolutely have to stop the trial and figure that out. Robin, state should call DB's mother just to point out that he has that he is, in fact, her son, Daryl Brooks. They could call her for a lot of reasons. Jay Carr, he mentioned today that one of his witnesses he cannot have contact with. Is he seriously going to recall the girlfriend? How will that work out? He can call her technically. I mean, he's already questioned her once. He can try to recall her and ask her questions, I think. I don't know if this judge is not going to allow him to, but the rules of law would allow him to. Tim Hicks, my dad had a saying, ask a person where they're going and they'll tell you where they've been. Your dad is a wise man, Tim, and that's exactly part of the technique. Um that these law enforcement officers used Beth Allen, Peter, just an observation. You and the judge could be siblings. You look alike. Well, thank you. I actually think she's beautiful. 
John O'Rourke, hit that like button for the smartest and friendliest chat in the game. Cheers to some of our leaders, Azam Mo, Rich Cat Ranch, and the mods. Thank you, and thank you, John. One of our stalwarts here. Mo, why did he call him? Because his original statement said black truck, but he didn't remember his original statement on the stand. So he was kind of irrelevant. I don't think he was irrelevant at all. I think he was a great witness for the state. Another victim that got hit, broke his leg, and had multiple surgeries. Bobby Cat, hello, Peter, and chat. Question, could this case possibly change pro se cases? It's such a waste of the court's time. I do not think so. Almost every pro se case is like this. Lots of sovereigns like this. There is case law on the issue. He's not bringing up any novel arguments. He's not bringing up any anything that hasn't been dealt with in the past. I really don't think, I think maybe that's what he's trying to do, but I really don't think that's what's happening here. Thank you for the big super chat, Bobby Cat. Judy Grass, doesn't seem like he's trying to go goad the judge into doing something she shouldn't. It's like he's deliberately pushing buttons. Absolutely. He wants to do anything he can to get a mistrial or a delay or something to where he doesn't get to the end of this trial. Misty Young, why are the cross-examinations allowed to lead exactly? Also, is it proved he was a sob sit before this trial? I think he said he was. It doesn't need to be proven, but that's just the rules of evidence. If you're cross-examining the witness in order to kind of control them because they're not going to be a friendly witness to you, they may try to dance, and we are allowed as lawyers or as pro se litigants to ask leading questions because we are they are not our friendly witnesses. They are adverse witnesses to us. Craig C., is he angling for the Chewbacca defense from South Park? If Chewbacca lives on Endor, you must acquit. Zach Apple, Brooks has never had to pay for consequences of his behavior. He skated through his entire life. I don't know about that. I mean, he's, he's going to hit him now. Jen Burns, can you imagine being his mother? She must be bald from pulling her hair out when he was a child. I sure would be. Not a job I want. Jay Gross, since the jury can't hear everything behind the scenes, I worry that Brooks is going to provide reasonable doubt with the jury about the court's actions. The court is literally instructing them to not take that into account. They are not allowed to take that into account. So they would have to totally disregard the judge's rulings, which juries do not do. Juries usually see through this. They usually see through this. Runkle of the Bailey, what's up, buddy? Uh, chipping this in towards a celebration for your imminent 150K milestone. That's awesome, man. Thank you. I don't know if he's ever been in our chat before. I feel like we got to say thank you, sir. Respect our uh, bigger channels here. Uh, Runkle of the Bailey is another YouTube channel with Law and Lumber. A lot of the big channels around popping in to say hi and show support. Really nice when they always do that. Really good channel. Canadian lawyer. Does a lot of stuff on guns, leather working. Uh, uh, what was I going to say? Com not comparable, but the counterpart. Counterpart to Rob's uh, woodworking. Melanie Chambers. Do you think he would be a, as disrespectful to judge as a man? That's a great question. That's a really great question. My guess would be yes. Paula Graham, does it create an appellate issue if she requires him to go on the SUV viewing tomorrow and he said he does not want to go? She is allowed to, to force him to go because she's actually protecting the appellate issues because if he would say, oh, I wasn't able to confront this or I wasn't able to see what they did there, he is arguing with everything, so might as well force him to go. How does it hurt his case if she forces him to go, right? She is erring on the safe side every time. And the safe side here is forcing him to go, be at the viewing, because if he wasn't there, you better believe he was going to make that an issue for appeal. Jared Draper, the case the judge cites, he can reclaim the right to be present as soon as he is willing to comport himself with decorum and respect. Is this why the judge is so willing to allow him back? Yes, and the judge is trying to give him every benefit of the doubt. She's trying to give him a fair trial. She's trying to protect his constitutional rights. That is what she is trying to do. Stace on the case. I'm sorry, Bobby Cat. Can everyone wish Stace on the case a very happy birthday? Happy birthday, Stace on the case. And if you watch this, thanks for, for joining us on your birthday. Uh, Boricua Jewel. Got to give it to the state. She is letting it be known. Open the door. Reminds me of Game of Thrones. Hodor. Never seen Game of Thrones, which I always get heat in the chat for that. Tori File. The closer it gets to the end of the trial, the worse his behavior gets. Have you noticed? Yes. He sees the end in sight, and it's not good. It's not good for him. He does not want this to end. John O'Rourke, Stace on the Case, a.k.a. the chat legend. Happy birthday. Zerg, this is actually the worst judge he could have gotten because she's too patient to be baited into delays. That is true. Maybe it is the worst judge because she is really protecting this case for appeal. 
House of Virgo, love your channel. Can you slow the chat so we can all discuss with each other? Thanks. We do have it on like 20 second delay or something. I don't know. I don't set that stuff. Um, the behind the scenes people do. So I think we do have it slowed. I guess we can try to slow it a little bit more. Rody, this trial has blown my mind. Aside, sorry, joined the stream late. DB looked so ready and confident to question the FBI agent, but ended up getting absolutely nothing out of him fail. He rubbed his hands before. Uh, I, don't, I thought this guy was not FBI. I thought the other guy in the room was him. with him was FBI, regardless. Point taken. Melanie, what would the judge have to do to cause a mistrial? Thanks, Utrid. Stomp on his rights. Steamroll him. She's not doing it. Disrespect him in front of the jury on purpose. She's not doing any of that. Um, she really is is protecting this record if I'm being completely honest. Almost 6,000 people in the chat, which is the biggest stream we've had in a long time. So if you're new, if you came over because Runkle's here or because Law and Lumber's here and you subscribe to those channels, hit that subscribe button here. You won't be disappointed, hopefully. A lot of legal breakdowns here on this channel. We try to have fun. We try to answer a lot of questions. Um, and we are going to get to more of the questions after we talk a little bit more about the cop's testimony. The cop basically said he's spewing lies all the time. He lies about this. He lies about that. He exaggerates about this. He exaggerates about that. Problem is, you shouldn't really be able to say that and comment about people lying. Now, you can say, he said this. He said he didn't have a car, but we found a car key in his pocket. He said he didn't know who owned the car, and then we found out his mom owned the car. He says he lives with his mom, and his mom owns the car. It's not all adding up. You can say all that, but you shouldn't necessarily characterize witness testimony. The judge actually steps in, reprimands the cops, the cop and the state, the cop says, okay. The state says, okay. That was great by the judge again, which she didn't do at other points that I pointed out with some little nitpicky stuff about leading questions or whatever. She did do it here, which again, protects the defendant, protects the appellate issues. And that's really what she should be doing because he's losing this case for himself. She just needs to make sure it's a good verdict that's upheld, a fair verdict that cannot be appealed. A lot of you asked, can the cop keep questioning him without telling him exactly what he's going to be charged with. Yes. First off, cops don't make the charging decision, which they eventually get to. Um, and he reads him his Miranda rights, which we'll get to that later as well in more detail. But when you read your Miranda rights and he keeps talking to you, he knows he's in a custodial interview and he can plead the fifth or ask for a lawyer at any time, which he starts to try to make those arguments. Um, and he says, I knew what you all were going to do. You're trying to set me up. You're trying to get me to tell on myself. And then... Just a, I mean, almost a funny part where the cops play the oldest trick in the book when there's literally a camera right above and they step out of the room for a second. And what does Daryl Brooks uh, do as he is saying his shoulder hurts so bad? Right when they walk out of the room, things change, which again shows this jury what his manipulation looks like. In black and white here, actually in color, I should say. They show exactly what this looks like. Let's check. Get, oh my God. Yeah, give us a minute. Ah, see what we got. Dude, they, they gotta, how, how, it gotta be something wrong, man. How the hell does it, sometimes sprains will pop too. Yeah, yeah. The pops are hurting like this, it makes things mental. The sprains can actually be more painful than a break. Whatever, so got, whatever they did, it hurts so bad. Want to keep the food, want to keep the food in the soda? God. Ah. So they leave the room and immediately things change. He starts trying to look at their papers. And then he sees if the phone works. Just a little caught on candid camera type of thing, you know? Oh, look. And they walk back in and all of a sudden it's, ah, my shoulder hurts again. It just doesn't look good because the jury's got eyes and ears. They're looking at this stuff themselves and trying to determine whether or not he's believable, right? Whether or not they can trust him and listen to his arguments. And, and that's the difficult part. And then the cops try to like guilt him into, you know, telling on himself saying, are you a man of integrity, a man of God, a spiritual man? Are you going to tell the truth? They start showing him pictures. So we'll watch a little bit of that here. Right there. No, that's not me. No, that's not me. It's not you. That's not me. It's not, me. It's not you. No, I don't. I don't. That's Darrell. <laughs> that's you. That's you, Darrell. Why you say? 
They literally show it like that. That's you, Darrell. That is, that is in fact you, sir. Regardless of what you say, that is you. And Brooke says, don't try to spin it. Trying to railroad me. They do kind of seem like they're trying to guilt him, in my opinion. But doesn't really work because he's him. And it's hard to guilt a guy like him. But at lunch, they talk about the fact that they are going to take the jury and visit the car. And I can't wait to see how they handle this as far as live streaming. They said something about law enforcement is going to figure out a way to keep the live stream going, which is really interesting to me. And then, of course, Daryl Brooks, when it's offered to him, do you want to go? He starts arguing and says no. And there's another argument between him and the judge where the judge has to lay down the law with him. And let's listen to it because it's interesting. And the judge finally says what we are all thinking. She's like, I've been trying to be respectful, putting it on the record every time you say I don't consent to being called that name. But let's let's dig in. Let's see what the record actually reflects about your name, Mr. Brooks. It's essentially uh, would be no different than bringing a firearm into the courtroom during a uh, shooting case. And I would just simply note the first degree intentional homicide and first degree recklessly endangering safety charges are what carry the enhancer for use of a dangerous weapon. Of course, the um, the hit and run does not have that enhancer, nor do the bail jumping and batteries. But yes. with that caveat. Yes, thank you for that correction, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Brooks? I'm confused to that too. Uh, why are there only certain charges that have an enhancer? Well, the court's not going to answer that, sir. Those just happen to be the charges. The state is tasked with proving each one of those charges and any uh, special verdict question that goes along with it. Um, beyond a reasonable doubt, they bear the burden of proof as was spelled out in all of the preliminary jury instructions. So that's how I'll answer that. Um, in terms of the jury view, I did grant the motion previously. Um, it was unopposed. And I'm not hearing anything that would cause me to reconsider that. In terms of the time that's being requested do you have any position on that um do i have to be present for this i would like you to be and yes that's we're making arrangements for you to be there do, sir do i have to be present for it and also for the record i don't consent to the name that's being referred to ask, i'll use this opportunity sir to ask what name you prefer to be called because we now have how does he remember every time like if i'm in trial I, there's got to be at least some time they say my name that I would forget to make this argument, but it seems like he never misses an opportunity, but she's going to take this opportunity to dig in a little bit. Evidence in the record where you provided your name to, upon questioning, uh, there was video from when you were taken into custody. And then, uh, of course, Detective Carpenter has testified about that as well. Again, I, I try to refer to the parties by name because that is how I believe I demonstrate respect and decorum um, in this courtroom. Um, so if and we've been given no other name, sir, by which to call you by. And I must, at that point, go back to what's on the criminal complaint, which is the initial charging document um, that is what was filed in order to initiate the case. Um, with all due respect, the record should be corrected. I didn't put anything on the record. That was... I didn't say that. I said there's said evidence that. in the record. Well, evidence, what, what, you referred that evidence to me. So there's evidence in the record, but be that as it may, I'm just letting you know, I'm going to keep referring to you sometimes as defendant, sometimes as sir, sometimes as Daryl Brooks, sometimes as Mr. Brooks. I understand you may still have an objection, but I've been given no other name from you by which to call you. Uh, I follow. And do you see how awkward it is? Like when she asks it just straight up to cut through the BS, even he is a little uncomfortable in how to answer this question or how to keep the facade going. Uh, but there's, there's still a lack of understanding. Uh, are you referring to the name? That was in all caps on all the filings. Because every oh, you're you're going to try that argument. Well, she's got a response for that argument because a lot of us talked about that too. Is it the all caps issue? Well, we're about to find out. Okay, that, I, have I, find, I find the response to be um, kind of dis disingenuous, sir. So um, there was this, no is a, this is, I believe, a tactic by you to create some type of confusion, which I don't believe there is any about who you are and what name I need to refer to you as. I never said you had to refer to me by, by any specific name. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that every filing that has ever been filed was in capital letters. That's a fact. I have paperwork to prove that. I don't recognize that name, nor do I know any individual by that name. That's all I'm stating. Well, let's assume for a second that it's not in all caps. Do you recognize that? No, I do not. Okay. Well, we never were... answered that. Exactly. So can we just move on and realize that this is all just part of the show, part of the Daryl Brooks show? 
Because even a lot of us that are being reasonable people trying to understand his point of view, I see people making comments that maybe some of his tactics are working. But at the end of the day, that's all they are is tactics. There's nothing actually behind them. If he had a reason to describe why he's got a problem with the all caps, why he's got a problem with the name, give it to us now. But he doesn't. So then we're going to keep going, sir. Um, we're a little bit off topic in terms of the request by the state. I'll give you one more opportunity to answer that. They've requested that whatever we're doing tomorrow morning, whether it be their case, whether it be uh, if you are calling witnesses, that we pause about 1145 in order for the jurors, the court and the parties to be taken to that secure location for that jury view. Do you have any position as it relates to that? Yeah, my position was when I answered, I said, do I have to be present? I'm requiring you to be there. Yes. And what reason do I have to be present? Unless you're willing to. Uh, go through a colloquy with this court and intentionally waive your right to be there because uh, then I'm, I'm going to require you to be there. And that's not explaining why I have to be there, though. Because I'm requiring you to be there. Sir. And you just made that decision now? All right. He's not answering. So frustrating, beyond frustrating to come to work and do your job, try to uphold the comp uh, Constitution, and this is what happens. So let's get to the cross where Daryl Brooks rubs his hands together, says, I got a lot of questions. Why are you calling me you? Who's the you? Why didn't you tell me what I was being charged with? Um, why did you use your phone to record this conversation, especially in an interrogation of this magnitude? He knows how serious this is. He knows how bad this is. When he heard about the injuries, even he was taken aback at how bad this actually was and how sad this was. It is brutal to hear about the injuries and the children and the strollers. Then he tries to get into police procedures. And normally police procedures are appropriate questions, but the way that he was asking them, like, are you supposed to violate my Fifth Amendment right? It's like, that's, we've already had this issue. We've already litigated this issue. We're not going to do it again here. So what does that mean? It's pretty clear to me that his lawyers filed a motion to suppress this interview based on the fact that either they didn't tell him what he was being charged with. Uh, he made some mention that maybe he invoked his fifth amendment, right? But he did not clearly say, I, I invoke my fifth amendment, right? I want to speak to a lawyer. I have nothing further to say. Stop asking me questions. We've done videos on that. We can do more on how exactly in the easiest and simplest way to invoke your Fifth Amendment right. But he did exactly what I explained to people is the worst thing you can try to do. And that is to outsmart the cops, lie your way out of a situation, try to talk your way out, explain your way out. It almost never works. And that waiver of rights without knowing them, it is waiting to post next week when I'm going to be in trial. So... Keep an eye out. If you haven't subscribed already, hit the notification bell because you're not going to want to miss that after you subscribe. And as Elon said, there's 6,000 people watching, only 2.2K likes. So hit that like button if you haven't already. It helps with the algorithm, apparently. Um, and then when we get... So the judge does not allow him to argue this. You violated my Fifth Amendment right stuff to confuse the jury. It's, our, it's That's a legal... There are certain things that are questions of law, certain things that are questions of fact. Was your Fifth Amendment uh, right violated? And should this interview be fruit of the poisonous tree that should not go as evidence before the jury? That is a question of law that the judge has already made. Therefore, it cannot be argued to the jury as a question of fact. Um, when we come back, he talks about how the cop said that, you know, uh, women are crazy and all women are crazy. You know what it's like dealing with crazy women, trying to make the cop look bad and the jury not like him. And the cop's like, yeah, I was trying to build rapport with you. That's basically what you were saying. I was trying to buddy up with you so you'd be more loose-lipped, basically, is what he was saying. Um, the cop starts talking about, this was an interesting thing where the judge stepped in again. The, the cop starts talking about how Brooks did commit domestic violence or whatever. And she's like, ah, this is all for the jury to decide. You know, this is just one witness's opinion. That's an ultimate issue for the jury. So she's not letting people testify to the ultimate issue because Brooks is walking straight down there, straight down that path. Um, so you lied. Did you lie to me? Is lying part of your tactic? What's funny is they objected to it. The judge sustained it as argumentative, but the cop was like perfectly fine saying yes. He's like, I withheld information. Yeah, it's an interrogation tactic. I don't have to tell you the truth about certain things. 
the, the cop didn't seem to care. Again, they confirmed no drugs, no alcohol. And you, sir, are the subject. You, Daryl Brooks. And in case there was any confusion about whether his Miranda rights were read to him, at the end of redirect, they put on the screen the actual sheet of Miranda rights that the cop read to Daryl Brooks. And the reason that was allowed to come in is because Daryl Brooks brought it up with the jury. And to me, that's fair game. That's not overstepping, not reversible error, not an appellate issue. And that basically ended our testimony today. This poor cop finally gets off the stand after what seems like forever because we had breaks. We had um, other witnesses come in. We had other arguments. We had Daryl Brooks getting thrown out of the courtroom all in the middle of his testimony. All right, we're about to get to more questions. So if you have questions, get them in. I usually stop at an hour, so we're going to go a little long today. Hit the subscribe button and the like button for extra time for some OT on tonight's video. Bill Schley, I am a Waukesha resident, and it truly pains me with what DB is putting the victims through. Really enjoy your analysis. Thank you, Bill. And it is brutal. It is brutal, and I am 100% saying I don't think it's going to work. I don't think it should work. I'm glad it's not going to work. Jason Restool, during sentencing, do you think Judge Darrow, Doro, will finally verbally blast Brooks? I don't think so. Honestly, she shows less bias, less judicial misconduct if she just says, I think you actually did a pretty good job without a couple outbursts, but the jury has spoken. You're guilty. What you did is horrible. You hurt a lot of people. You killed a lot of people. You're getting multiple life sentences. She also heard the pretrial offer, which I'll, I'll, judges don't always hear what the pretrial offer is. Sometimes those ne plea negotiations are confidential and the judge should stay out. So she knows the state offered six life sentences, so she's going to give more. MVD, possibly ignorant question. Don't worry about it. Is there no way to fully stop the disruption of objecting to call him by himself? She can put him in the other courtroom. She can gag him. She can bind his hands. She can tape his mouth shut, literally which a lot of people think you should not be able to do, but there's some case law, the gray area that you might be able to do that. But I think what she's doing is the right way. She's handling it the best she can. I may just kick him to the other courtroom so I can mute him whenever I want if I was the judge. Michael Bellino, do you think this public defender's previously prepared provided him with questions for the witnesses he intends to call? Yeah, I think he's got a lot of the preparation notes from the public defender. Ashley King, can you explain why they do multi-life sentences just to hammer it home harder, make the victims feel better, closure, serious punishment. I mean, practically speaking, it doesn't make a difference. You only got one life to live. Hannah P., will DB, in, will DB be in handcuffs during the SUV viewing due to it being outside the courtroom, just like protecting him by letting him wear a suit and not his jail orange? Depends. Sometimes they won't, they won't make him. Maybe they'll shackle his feet so he can't run away, uh, but it'll be heavily guarded for sure. House of Virgo, you deserve 1 million subscribers. Go Eagles. Fly, Eagles, fly for this comment, House of Virgo. And thank you. That's very nice. And I love that you all think so, regardless of where we ever get, if we ever hit 150 or 250 or whatever, um, it is nice that you all really enjoy the channel. The people that are here are real ones, as we say. Christian Lee, loving the conversation. Just subbed. Great job. Thank you, Christian. Appreciate you. Share it with your friends that are watching this case too so they can join the conversation. Ashley Ducharme, you'd get to 150K so fast if you tell everyone you'll watch Game of Thrones when you hit it. Any golf charity event updates with Rob? I'm baiting him into it. I beat him in our fantasy football matchup this week. I think I'm three and three or four and two, something like that. Some of you have beaten me. Um, that's in our fantasy, the lawyer you know, fantasy football league. It's a deep 20 team league, but I bested Rob this week. That's one. Next is golf. KWNY Upstate. Brooks is faking pain like he got advised by a personal injury lawyer. Yeah, and any personal injury lawyer that advises somebody to fake pain gets what they deserve and the proof ending up coming out in a video like this and it blowing up in their face. Anybody that litigates cases and actually takes them to trial, if your client's faking pain, that's a lot of wasted time and money for you. Katie, has he been on or is he going to be on the stand? If he is going to take the stand, it will be later. John O'Rourke, did he end his cross 
or get 906.11 at the end of the day. The last hour was even hard to watch. Peter style, AKA two times speed. It's the only way to watch this trial. In my opinion, I believe he actually did finish his cross. Salina Stovall. This guy has nothing to lose. It's a life sentence with a plea or found guilty. Is this, or this is his Hail Mary. And now he's famous. Infamous, I believe is how they describe someone like him. Firefly. Will the state bring in the parents of the child that died? Your thoughts. I am not sure if they did, it will be brutal and it will be damning for him. Third Wasson. He knows evidence is stacked up against him. The more evidence, the more belligerent he becomes. I agree. It's like the more he feels trapped, the worse he's going to get. MVD, it appears the line for her is his under the breath comments. Why is that her line? I agree. She really seems to be annoyed at that. And just a blatant disrespect and disregard for when she tells him to do something. Angelina Nini just passed the Texas bar. Hearing DB say subject matter jurisdiction ad nauseum gives me PTSD. <laughs> That's great. Angelina, congratulations. Cheers to Angelina. That's awesome. Good luck. Do great things. Use that law degree for good. Make people think lawyers are good because we can be. MVD has an has a any jury bought the I'm not who I am approach with the pictures and the videos and hearing his voice, seeing him in the mask. I mean, they can pretty much confirm that's him in these interrogation videos, which is why it's so important to actually play them. Mo, if he doesn't go, he can't object to anything the state says while showing the car, it's in his best interest to go. I, I mean if we're talking seriously, it isn't his best interest to go. He should go. He should see what happens. He should see if there's any issues. If he wants to argue anything that happens in closing or an opening, he's going to have to be there to see it. Law and Lumber doing some math for us. More than 6,000 people watching and only 2.3K likes. Y'all, it's a mouse click, but it means the world to these creators. Please take that one second. Go hit the like. More gifted memberships incoming if we hit 3K. Law and Lumber is feeling generous. And I'll just take this as payment for our bet we never made for when we had a fantasy football matchup. And if we get matched up later in the season or hopefully in the playoffs, we will have some real live on-air bets because it kind of snuck up on me. I didn't even notice I was playing him until I checked the scores, which I'm sure is the same for him. We both had somebody out still in the lineup, which is a big no-no in fantasy football. But mine was a late, a late disclosure. Thank you, Rob. You're literally the best. Thanks for being in here, buddy. Can stenographers get gifts? She needs a mega pint. Not during the trial, that's for sure. MVD, what is the threshold for a judge to issue a curative statement order to the jury when she feels it's necessary? It's judicial uh, discretion in these situations. Uh, there are some situations like uh, spoliation, like if evidence is destroyed or lost, sometimes there's, there's law that says, judge, you have to give a curative instruction at this point. But when dealing with stuff like this with a pro se defendant, it's kind of just whenever she feels it's necessary. In the interest of justice, as they say. Carl B., did the judge confirm a jury instruction addressing the sovereign claims so they're not confused by his comments? I have not heard that yet. She has threatened it a few times, but I have not heard her actually say if she's going to do that and if she does do it, what that instruction will be. Team YouTube, how does Brooks and the detectives talking about how he has been through all of this before or something like that during the interrogation not tip off the jury to Brooks's criminal history? It's a good point, but he's also there for bail jumping, which I think they can say... He's been arrested before, so he at least knows the process. Or just saying you know the process and you've been through it doesn't necessarily mean you've been arrested or even convicted of crimes. You could know it from a bunch of different ways. Brian Ailman uh, never said the magic L word that shuts down the questioning, even if he wanted to assert his right to remain silent. He didn't say a lot of the magic words. Yeah, lawyer is one of them, but I'm pleading the fifth or I'm going to remain silent or I'm ending this interview. There's lots of ways you could do it, but yeah, the magic words are the easiest words. Of course, always the easiest way to do it. Thank you, Brian, for the comment. Yeah. Uh, mom of three, I got impatient and skipped ahead a little bit. I wanted to show the eye roll and the judge actually said, do not roll your eyes. I mean, he said, I didn't want my eyes. Don't do that. Don't do that judge. It's like, they're literally fighting in a way the judge is, is letting him get on too equal of a playing field in my opinion. But again, she's doing her duty and trying to accomplish the main goal, which is to get this trial to a verdict. Thank you, Mary Carol Rowan. Uh, Rich Cat Ranch, did you watch an episode of Supernatural yet? No, I have not. I really don't watch a lot of TV. If my wife likes it. Hit my wife up, tell her to start watching Supernatural. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll watch some of it with her. 
Law and Lumber. Fantasy football shame. Does the pain ever end? Never, man. I mean, we never, we may never play each other in fantasy football again, and I'd be okay with that because going out on top is like the best ever. So maybe, maybe we'll just end the league so that I can just have this forever. At least it's something, right? Dresses Jon Snow from Game of Thrones for 150K. We're not going to dress up like anything for 150K. I am going to do giveaways at 150K, but we may do something big if we ever get to 250K. I don't know what. We'll do some fun stuff for 150K for sure. Some fun shows, some fun giveaways. Um, we'll definitely do some fun stuff. Tori File, I'm pulling a Peter and seeing some negatives about the cop. I felt like the cop was argumentative and said a lot of stuff he shouldn't like calling him a liar over and over, just seeing the facts and explaining how he wasn't really hurt. It's like, you can say, watch the clip. Like he's really hurt when we, but when we leave, he's fine. But again, I agree with you. You don't need to push. You don't need to take it that far. He hangs himself with his own words. I agree, Tori. You're starting to pick up. I, and I think that's good. I think we all learn from each other and we really um, understand how this system works better by talking about it with each other. Sheila M. Peter, do you have proof that Rob... Uh, does lumber work? No, I thought you were just going to say, does Rob work period? I do have proof of that because he's talked to me about his trials before. Um, so I know he has trials and I know he does real law work. I cannot confirm or deny the lumber work because I, I don't have any pieces of wood with his, uh, workmanship all over them that I would love to prominently display on my videos. I haven't seen that in person yet. I haven't seen it. I love you, Rob. MVD after probably annoying you just calling, you're not annoying me at all. If you're saying you're annoying me, I thought, I thought you were going to reference Brooks being annoying. <laughs> I'm so hooked on this channel. MVD we're hooked on you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for all the awesome questions. The questions add so much to the content. You guys may think I'm blowing smoke sometimes, but literally we wouldn't have nearly as much to talk about if you didn't ask questions. And every time you ask questions, there are other people that have those same questions. I guarantee it. Um, so I appreciate MVD and everybody else that's asked a ton of questions tonight and Angelina Nini. And this group of members I'm about to, to kind of run through here, the new members that are joining, it's going to be really fun to have so many more people. Karina, join us in that members only chat, the subscribers only video. When we just kind of chill a little bit, we don't get as legal. We don't get as, you know, heady about it. Um, it's a little just kind of relaxed show where we hang out. We get to know each other a little bit more, talk about movies or food or trips or golf or hobbies or whatever. Carolyn's going to be there as well. So make sure you hit that alert bell misty young as well as a new member i've seen her pop up in a bunch of questions today so thank you misty so yeah make sure you hit that reminder bell so that you don't miss uh the members only video and subscribers only watch video if you're not a member that's totally cool we still want you to come watch hang out in there get in the conversation and the comments will be open afterwards just a little boost we give to the members just to keep it having fun um Boricua Jewel, the Game of Thrones family in here is strong, Peter. Well, if it's really strong, I mean, gosh, Game of Thrones, it's like, I hear it's like another world and there's so many episodes and different types of people and different names. I don't know if I'm ready for that. I really don't know. BR Longhorn is also a new member. Nancy Grigsby is a new member as well. Maybe if we we set a membership goal and if the membership hits a certain goal or something, then we, then we hit uh, Game of Thrones. Sandra Ramirez, it feels like it's going to happen tonight. And no surprise that MVD takes the plunge to be a member as well. So thank you to all the new members. That's awesome. Carsto. Hi, Peter. How does he provide his own testimony if he's acting as his own lawyer? So we've answered this a couple times because so many people ask this question. So I'll take a second to answer it again. When a pro se defendant calls himself to the stand, he gives a narrative, which means he just takes the stand and he talks and he tells his side of the story. And for cross-examination, he cannot just plead the fifth and walk away. The state gets to cross-examine him. He's opening himself up to that. After the state finishes cross-examining him, he takes the stand or he stays on the stand and gets to do his redirect by giving another narrative and explaining whatever he wants to explain or clarify from what the state got off and cross. Marissa Esposito, you'd think his life was on the line. He'd at least try to learn simple rules of evidence to make proper objections. I mean, I guess, or at least understand that they're allowed to lead witnesses if they're your witnesses, since you've been allowed to lead witnesses the entire trial. Gabri uh, Gabarelli Garcia, if you were a judge, would you have had the same patience based on the trial days you've been watching? Unfortunately, I'd have to say no. I'd like to think I could remain patient enough to protect this case from appeal, but I do not think I'd be as patient as this judge. 
I think I'd have him sitting in the other courtroom where I can mute him whenever I want. Um, and I would be quick to boot him back to that courtroom. So he can't just say, oh yeah, I'm going to obey the rules now, but you know, he disobeys them when he comes in. I would make him admit that he disobeyed the rules before he came in, maybe get petty here and there, but she has the patience of a saint, as people said. Monica and Kimberly are two new members. Welcome. Rob gifted 20 memberships, which is probably why the memberships are exploding because Rob being the guy that he is, he gifted the amount of memberships as fantasy football teams we have in our league. Thank you, Linda. Uh, Illinois Observer, body cam footage of him laying down and putting his hands behind his back. Yeah, I mean, and that that's when he says he's Daryl Brooks. They get the ID out and all of that. And Heidi Wislang, thank you so much for the super chat. Holy cow. There was a lot of questions in there. I think we hit them all for tonight. We got 15, 16 minutes of bonus time. You know how I like to keep them under an hour. Um, Law and Lumber has some really great topics. Yeah, he does trials of the century and some cool stuff that's even different than just breaking down cases that are going on right now. Um, but I appreciate everybody jumping in, joining in for this live. It was awesome. It was so much fun. Hopefully all 6,000 of you can hit that like button on the way out. We're going to hit one more MVD question. What was his plan with his witness? I literally have no idea. I have no idea what his plan was with that witness saying he called somebody who literally he hit with a car and broke his leg. Whatever his plan was, it didn't work. And if that's an indication of what these witnesses are going to be like for him, it's not going well. And as Windy City Gal has joined, Law and Lumber lets me know 20 was a light estimate. You'll see eventually. Congrats on the win. My man pays his debts that he doesn't even owe. What do you call that? What do you call a guy who pays debts he doesn't even owe? Right? That's the best kind of guy, if you ask me. So thank you, Rob. You all are the best, but I got to call it now. It's a late night and I actually still have some more work to do. Appreciate you all. Until next time, this was a fun one. We'll be back at it tomorrow talking more about this Daryl Brooks case. And if Rob wants to actually join the video, let me know, Rob. We can get you in on the stream, buddy. All right, I'm out. See ya.